This is the fourth and final episode to complete the request from Orchid Ninja Samurai Nina-san about which orchids have long-lasting blooms. I would like to draw your attention to the disclaimer that I had in the intro to episode one, but to keep this video at a reasonable length, the ticker will repeat the disclaimer, which is important when it comes to my judgment of what I consider long-lasting blooms and the conditions I grow my orchids in. Episodes one, two, and three are linked in the description in case you would like to check out the recommended orchids that feature the genus from A through D and E through P partially, and then the rest of the genera starting with P. So in this video, we're going to complete the orchids I have experience with. Thank you so much for being here, for clicking on this video. I appreciate your time and support, as well as a thumbs up if you don't mind. What I'm also going to do in this final episode is add a bonus orchid one you may disagree with, but I hope that you hear me out and then see if the orchid actually belongs into the series. I look forward to hearing your opinion about that. And please know that at any time you can add orchids that you know have a long lasting bloom duration within the alphabetical letters of genera we are covering today, which will include R all the way through Z. Seeing as I am only able to speak on the orchids that I am growing or have grown, any additional recommendations are most welcome for all to read and draw inspiration from. One of my favorite winter blooming orchids is Rothara Yokosuka Story or Serajuara Yokosuka Story. These colors are so welcome during the dark months of the year and they will brighten any space during the dull months. When I say winter, I mean in the dead of winter, and then for a duration of five weeks is how long they will bloom. While not fragrant, the blooms are gorgeous. The lip has such a sturdy, waxy texture, it feels as though it is plastic. I also appreciate the proportions of the petals and sepals, how they frame that amazing yellow lip. I would consider this orchid to be medium to large. It is a reliable bloomer, and for the first time, I'm getting two new growths from it within a 12-month growing season after owning it for six years. To say that I'm really looking forward to seeing if both new growths will bloom is an understatement, even though the time of year when she blooms freaks me out. But as she is in the active growing phase, she is always exposed to bright light. No direct sun in my climate, so the bright light interprets as bright shade. And then during the winter, she has to tolerate some really, really gloomy conditions with very little light and still she blooms. Finally, we also get to a genus that I just adore. And if you don't have much space, but would like to add some of these colorful miniature orchids to your collection, then Tulumnias are a wonderful go-to. The footage you are seeing is from an extensive Tulumnia collection that I had back in the day. So going with the had, let me warn you about scale and Tulumnias. My entire collection was decimated because I was not paying attention one summer and they all contracted scale. Over the course of several years, I tried to rehabilitate them with daily scrutiny and treatments to ensure there is no return of the pest, but I was not successful. Seeing new growths and new roots always gave me hope, but after three years, one by one or two by two, they left the patio. So while across the board, this genus has the most amazing combination of colors and super long lasting blooms with spikes that will branch, extending the bloom duration for months as opposed to four weeks, per bloom cluster, please know that scale and tulumnias are not compatible at all, at least not in my case. However, these orchids are darling and each one has a different time when it blooms. In general, mine bloomed midwinter to early spring and another flush is possible with some of these tulumnias midfall to early winter. Basically, when a fan matures on a blooming sized tulumnia, it will bloom. Don't cut the spike off after the first cluster bloomed out, and more often than not, the spike will branch with more blooms. So as a side note, as much as I enjoyed my Tulumnias and as much as I recommend them, I am not replacing mine because my conditions just don't line up with their needs anymore. The species come with a separate set of challenges because their fans are so tiny and even mounted, they need a lot of humidity to accommodate the unruly growth habit. And for the most part, all of my Tulumnias used to grow in bright shade, no direct sun. Moving on to a very popular genus that has a whole slew of orchids in various sizes, often highly fragrant, is the Banda genus. 
I have had experience with Vanda Denisoniana, which blew my mind while I had the pleasure of growing her. The fragrance is something else for sure. It is super lemony with hints of powdered sugar and will definitely fill a room and can compete with an outdoor growing environment without losing its potency. It is delicious. My blooms lasted a good five weeks without looking tired. If you can get your hands on any Vanda that has Vanda Tessellata as a parent or even the speed itself then go for it. Know that you're going to be dealing with a very large orchid that will grow vigorously and bloom sporadically, meaning there is more vegetative growth than with other vandas before it blooms. But the fragrance is also mind-blowing. It is akin to Skittles or any other mixed fruity candy. My hybrid bloomed for six weeks mid-summer and in my dry conditions, but unfortunately it only bloomed once a year for me. Remember what I said earlier about adding your recommendations recommendations for long-lasting blooms. There are so many hybrids out there which also have long-lasting blooms, so knock yourself out in the comments because the Vanda genus does not hold back, and the more we know, the better. Thank you. I have had other hybrid Vandas that had long-lasting blooms, but they did not have that much of a fragrance to shout about. May I just say one thing here, because it has weighed heavy on my heart since I lost some of the Vandas you see here. Please know what you're getting into when it comes to the large Vandas. They will come to you in seedling size or near blooming size, and with that size, they are easily accommodated. They will grow nicely for you and mature to blooming size. It is, however, a huge challenge to keep these giants of the Vandas happy when conditions are not 100%. All my Vandas got bright light, many times direct sun, too much at times because the patio gets very small when large orchids like this are vying for space. These giants need a lot of fertilizer, which, if you do not have high humidity, cannot be applied or else root burn will result and with that, some diseases and pests can have easier time attacking them because the larger they grow, the more demanding they become. If they cannot be provided for as per, they will weaken and with that, you know, pests can get a foothold, including fungi. It's really something I want you to think about, especially if you do not have humidity higher than 70% and consistently warm temperatures. Really, really consider the potential struggle of growing these giants. Thinking ahead to five years in the future and beyond, I highly recommend you do that. Case in point, look at this Vanda Chao Praia, which is my pride and joy because, well, she's still around. She blooms two times per year for me. She has a bloom duration of two months, easily. Has now grown to be 10 feet tall with multiple fans already blooming size as well and is in the process of growing yet another set of new fans. I cannot tell you how happy this makes me after losing the others. While she does not like my cold temperatures, she endures them and somehow we make it through every winter together. This orchid is a prime example of what can happen when you grow the giants of the Vanda genus. Not exactly a candidate for indoor growing if you are in a climate that cannot have your orchids outdoors because your temperatures dip to freezing, but a prime example of what I mentioned earlier. Know what you're getting into and if in doubt, Feel free to ask me about specific vandas you might consider for your collection and climate. We can discuss additional details in the comments so that you do not experience what I did watching your vandas outgrow your capabilities and end up losing them. I can only speak on this hybrid Tourette vanda as being a vigorous orchid with long-lasting blooms. However, it gives me pause to think that most Tourette vandas would behave, grow and bloom in the same manner, which is awesome as these blooms are highly fragrant with a blueberry sugar scent filling the air no matter the temperatures. And she gets blasted with direct sun for at least six hours a day, if not longer, depending on the time of year. And I cannot believe that we have arrived at the letter Z in my database. What fun these episodes have been. Let me just say that it is an absolute joy to be able to edit videos that deals with blooms. While they take a lot of time to build, I have certainly enjoyed putting this series together. Right, anyway, Z in my database includes Zygopetalum and Zygonesia. Now, I do not have the latter anymore and I'm toying with the thought of getting rid of my remaining Zygopetalums because either my conditions are too dry and hot or too cold and dark. For that reason, my leaves always get leaf tip burn or the new growths don't stand a chance as the warm dry air frazzles the tender structures before they have a chance to harden off. 
even though they do seem to recover during my winter months, but only a tad because of the lack of the light when indoors during the time period when leaving them outdoors is not feasible. Anyway, it's just a rigmarole with zygos for me and be aware of the details I'm mentioning here so that you can weigh out your conditions and see if zygos are a good match for you and your climate, but they're blooms. Mm, mm. Mm, gorgeous, fragrant, and long-lasting, specifically up to six weeks without losing the vibrant colors or in less vibrant blooms, the detailed markings and spots do not bleed into each other. If you're into a little spice in your life, then you will really appreciate the sweet fragrance of zygos because they come with a hint of spice. The ones that I have had the pleasure of seeing and smelling, I would say the aromatic spices like cinnamon or allspice to be exact. It's just a wonderful mix of yum. Be prepared though, zygos can get very large. They hold on to their leaves for quite some time. They will start growing a new growth immediately after the bloom period is done and it is not unusual for zygos to start two new growths straight away even as a young plant. Give them a lot of bright light, no direct sun because their leaves will burn and they need a good amount of humidity with good airflow to boot to avoid leaves getting spots on them as well as leaf tip dieback. While their roots are sensitive when it comes to repotting, once a zygote has its grow on, it will hold on to an older root system for many, many years while growing the next set of roots and that is why they will grow very large very quickly. What I really enjoyed about zygos is that like Sologenes, you do not have to wait for a growth to mature before the orchid blooms. The spike grows while the new growth is still very much in its infancy, then it stops growing while the orchid is in bloom, only to start growing again towards the end of the bloom period and then mature. There's no need to wait for the spike, which is always so much fun. My zygos bloom two times per year when they grew better. Late fall for six weeks and then mid spring and into summer was the next flush of blooms. Now to the bonus orchid with sort of long lasting blooms. I'm going to push the envelope a little bit here because all the previous recommendations throughout these episodes, I focused on long lasting as per the bloom period of the actual blooms, but I'm not going to end this series without mentioning Vandica stylus lucneri. While each spike will hold well beyond three weeks and my standard for long lasting blooms is four weeks, <laughs> once this orchid gets its grow on and matures, it will bloom two times per year. And who doesn't like that? Midsummer for the first time and then again in fall. And as you can see with mine, this orchid arrived with a single fan, it grew more fans and is now blooming with five spikes, which totals this spike count for 2024 to seven. The fragrance of this orchid reminds me very much of my Denisoniana, of course, with Amanda Falcata being a parent, you get that wonderful kick of lemon and then sugar and all of that intermingles. These tiny blooms are not to be underestimated with just how much fragrance and potency they can push out. It's divine. I highly recommend this and hope that making this exception to the rule for what I consider long lasting was worth your while watching to the end and that it inspired you to consider growing it, waiting patiently of course until it matures and performs the way mine does, all the while wrapped up in a wonderful little package because Lou Sneary is not a big orchid as you can see and for that reason it's not a hard one to accommodate even as it matures year in year out. And with that, let me thank you Orchid Ninja Samurai Nina San for requesting this topic, which turned out to be several installments. I appreciate the support, the inspiration so, so much. I hope that I could give some of that back with my videos. Also, thank you so much for watching to the end. I get to wish you a wonderful day, but as always, I attach a condition to that. Please stay safe. Take care. Bye.